The Redemption of Babel, a devotional for the season of Lent, produced by Northside Church. Friday, February 24th. Our scripture passage today comes from Genesis chapter 4, verses 13 through 17. Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is more than I can bear. Today you are driving me from the land, and I will be hidden from your presence. I will be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. But the Lord said to him, Not so. Anyone who kills Cain will suffer vengeance seven times over. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain, so that no one who found him would kill him. So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. Cain made love to his wife, and she became pregnant and gave birth to Enoch. Cain was then building a city, and he named it after his son, Enoch. Cain is a constant reminder to me that things can always get worse. Have you arrogantly disobeyed God and done the one thing that you were not allowed to do, thereby introducing sin and death into God's good creation, bringing the whole thing that God had worked so hard to create for you, and so getting you, your family, and all your descendants banished from a utopian paradise where you walked with God in the cool of the day? Think it can't get any worse? Cain responds, hold my goat's milk. Even outside the paradise of Eden, God had so ordered creation as to keep chaos at bay. There were plants and animals, crops and flocks, provided for the first family, even if they had to work a lot harder to procure them. Though they no longer walked with God in the garden, God was still present with them. Things were not what they were, but it certainly could have been worse. And this is where Cain Adamson steps onto the stage. Cain is angry because God favored his little brother Abel's offerings and not his. It's an attitude problem that leads to the first of many cases of sibling rivalry gone wrong in the Bible. God warns Cain about his anger. Sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. In response, Cain immediately murders his baby brother. God punishes Cain's act of chaos by banishing him even further, casting Cain into the wilderness to become a restless wanderer. Even then, God shows grace by marking Cain with a symbol, a tattoo on his forehead that ensures God's vengeance if anyone harms him. The first two brothers in the story of creation, and one of them has killed the other. Still think it can't get any worse? Rather than trust God and the mark of protection, and so promise of presence given to him, Cain decides to build walls of protection of his own against the chaos of the wilderness. That's right, Cain builds the very first city in the Bible, naming it with his own legacy, a poor reflection of the garden that God had originally planted for all of us. But before we blame or laugh too hard at Cain, Isn't this what we do when we feel like lonely and restless wanderers in the wilderness of the world? Don't we build walls of protection in our hearts and cities of self in our minds? Because, like Cain, we don't trust that God is present in the chaos of our lives.